Welcome to Maple Avenue United Methodist Church. My name is Josh Roberts, and I want to welcome you to worship here. Please take time to fill out a Connect card. You can find it on our website or in the description box below. Connect cards are your way of telling us you joined us in worship, but they also give you the opportunity to share prayer concerns and to connect with ministries that are happening here at Maple Avenue. This Wednesday, we will restart our study on the Apostles' Creed using an online service called Zoom. If you're interested in participating, please fill out your Connect card or send, or send me an email so that we can send you the link. As you know, our church remains closed to public gatherings. Church leaders are continuing to listen to the guidance of government leaders and leaders within the United Methodist Church. Please pay close attention to church emails and phone calls, as those are our primary way of filling you in as things change. I want to thank each of you for your continued generosity to the church. This past week, we released online giving as an additional resource to help all of us during this time. Friends, if you have any questions or concerns, please let me know. You can send me an email or call. I'd love to hear from you. My prayer is, friends, wherever you are today viewing this video, that you richly feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life and that this is a, a great time of worship for you. So now, let's turn our hearts and minds to the worship of God. In the book of John, the 14th chapter and the 9th verse, Jesus said, Because I live, you shall live also. Join with us in singing this great song that says, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Let's sing. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he Cause
Would you join me for a reading of God's word from the prophet Ezekiel? The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. He then said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and I will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from the graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Travis. As we get started, I think it's important to give a quick note about Ezekiel's background. You see, Ezekiel was a prophet active in the time when Jerusalem had fallen to King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians. And the people of Israel were subsequently exiled and taken from the Promised Land. It's in the midst of this defeat and exile that the prophet is carried up in a vision by God and shown this valley filled with dry bones. It's an ominous scene, and it's one that I know the people of Israel could easily relate to. Their world had been turned upside down, and they were left with questions. Questions like, how did this happen? We're God's chosen people. God rescued us from slavery in Egypt. God brought us to the promised land, and now we've been defeated and scattered. What do we do now? Is there any hope? They were reminded of their defeat on a daily basis as they looked out and they didn't see their homes, but rather they saw foreign cities. I'm sure many felt hopeless, like their best days had come and gone. Friends, as we talk about the defeat of Israel, I have a question for you. Have you ever felt defeated? I know right now that might be a cruel question. Some of you have shared stories of how you've gone to five or six stores in a day looking for toilet paper or another essential item, and you've been unable to find it. So I know when you go home after spending so much time trying to get something done and you weren't able to do it, that's a very um, frustrating moment, and probably you feel a little defeated. Yet on a more serious note, some people are getting phone calls to say that friends and family are sick. Some are getting phone calls of their own to say, you know, you're sick. You've got the coronavirus. Some people are being told not to come back to work, at least not for now. And all of the things surrounding the coronavirus right now, and we don't really know when it's going to end. And so there's some frustrations in that and some feelings of defeat. And we've had struggles before the coronavirus was part of our understanding. People have had struggles in their marriage, issues with family members, People have had problems with work. 
concerns over their finances and how they're going to make ends meet. There have been health concerns before the coronavirus. And these moments are frustrating because people try so hard. They try hard to to live healthy. They try hard to, to do their best at work. And they try hard to build good relationships. And when things don't quite work the way they want to, they they can often lead to deep frustrations and feelings of defeat. Some people feel defeated in their faith. They, they just know God will never love them because of all that they've done and all they've said. And because of the many times they've turned their back on God and walked away, there's no way God will ever use them now. And they feel defeated. Friends, we, we all have moments where we feel defeated in life. And yet this morning, the passage that we read today is is a hopeful one. It might not feel like that at first, but as we read it, we realize as, as the prophet is looking out over this valley filled with dry bones, God comes and God asks the prophet a question. He asks, prophet, can these bones live again? And that's an interesting question. I wonder if God asked that question because the people of Israel would have never imagined a scenario where God could love them and use them again. You know, sometimes when we have these moments of defeat, we move into a place of despair and hopelessness. We can't imagine a way that we can get around the obstacle that's in front of us. We don't see a path through the valley that's ahead of us. And yet in the midst of this, God asked the question, is there hope for these bones? Can they live again? And the prophet answers boldly, God, you know. You are the God who created us, the God who brought us out of slavery in Egypt. You're the God who gave us the promised land and the God who sustains us each and every day. You know whether or not these bones can live. You certainly have the power. It's up to you, God. And in that moment, God speaks to Ezekiel and tells him to to prophesy over the bones, over the valley, and say to the, to the valley, come alive. And as he does that, the bones start to rattle and start to come together. Tendons start to form. Flesh starts to wrap around the bones. And all the way up to there's one thing that's needed. And God says to Ezekiel, speak again. And he does, and then at that moment, God's presence, God's Spirit fills the valley, and the once dried up dead bones spring to life. The message for Israel was a clear one. God was saying to them, I know that things feel hopeless, but they are not hopeless. I will restore you to a great place, not because of who you are, not because of anything you've done, but because of my great love and grace. And power, I will bring you through this. And we know that in due time, Israel is restored and God brings them to a new era in their life. You know, so often, evil, defeat, and despair try to convince us that they have the final word. When bad things happen, those are the voices that say to us, There's nothing better on the other side. And so often, it's easy to listen to those voices. However, this passage tells us differently. Friends, in just a few days, we'll come to Good Friday. It's a day when evil thought it had won. Jesus was dead and now locked in a tomb. We're blessed to know the full story. At the appointed hour, Jesus rises from the dead, and when he does, he defeats not only death, but he defeats sin and evil. Friends, we are reminded today that the worst thing is never the last thing. We are reminded that God has the final word. And like Israel, God is with us and God has more in store for us. God has a plan for us beyond wherever we are right now. And yes, we have that hope and that future that we find in eternity, but there is a hope and a future for us right here and now. So know that whatever you are facing, God is with you and God has not given up on you. It doesn't matter how ominous it might look for you. Because I believe that this passage is not only a reminder to Israel that they have hope, but it's a reminder that we have a hope as well. 
So do not allow the voices of sin and evil and defeat to capture you. Don't believe the voices that say God will never love you because of what you've done or said. Don't believe that your best days have come and gone. There is hope. Not because of us or anything we're able to do, but because of God. Because of God's great love and grace and and mercy, there is hope. Our best days, friends, are yet to come. So friends, the calling of Ezekiel over the dry bones to come alive is still there for us today. We're being called to come alive in our faith, to trust God with our past, to trust God with the moments that we're facing right now and the moments that we will face in our future. Right now, we're being called to come alive You know, over the past few weeks, we've talked about how we all have this calling to love God and to love neighbor as ourselves, And this passage certainly connects to that. We're being called today to come alive and to love God in, in a new and powerful way in our life. And we're being called to love our neighbors and to serve our neighbors. Friends, we're being called to be our very best self for Christ and His kingdom. We're being called to come alive as the church. You know, over the past few weeks, we've seen great stories of hope. We've seen men and women who are taking great risk and working long hours to bring healing to people in their darkest hour. We're hearing stories of people who are changing everything about their business so that they can make these essential goods that the medical community needs to care for people. We're hearing and seeing stories of others who are working long hours to deliver the goods that we need in a safe way. And yet there's still room to grow. And that involves you and me. It involves the church coming to life in a full way. This past week I was talking to a member of our council. And as we were talking about different things happening here at the church, they said, you know, it's an exciting time, Josh. They weren't saying it's exciting because of the problems that people are facing or the the pain and the struggles. Rather, it's exciting because of the way the church is adapting. The way that the church is using this to do new things and to grow in new ways to reach people. And they're right, it is an exciting time. You know, friends, I'm reminded today that when God comes to Israel and and God brings them through, God didn't take them back to where they were before exile. God carried them through this time of exile and destruction to a new era in their life. God doesn't find us in the valley and take us back in time. God finds us in the valley and helps us navigate the valley onto the other side to a better time and a better place filled with opportunities for us to be in ministry. Things are changing and things will change. But the amazing thing is, is there's room for all of us to grow. Room for us to grow as the church and room for us to grow individually. Room for us to grow as a society. Friends, if you're a part of the Maple Avenue family, I challenge you to think of ways that you can be the church this week. How are you going to use this week as an opportunity to grow in your faith? And how are you going to use this week as an opportunity to grow as the church and to serve other people and to help them grow? Let's not waste this opportunity that we've been blessed with. Friends, the voice of the prophet is a clear one. Come alive. Don't listen to the voices of defeat and despair as they try to tell you that there's no hope and there's no future. Don't listen to those voices. The worst thing is never the last thing. God holds the final word, and God is calling for us all to come alive, to come alive in our faith and to trust Him more, and to come alive as the church in our capacity to grow and serve the world around us and to share with them a message of hope and life in this time that we find ourselves in. So friends, use this next week as an opportunity to do just that, to come to life, to live as people who truly believe that the worst thing is never the last thing, to believe that God has the final word, and to believe that our best days are still to come. Friends, come alive. Amen. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, 
God who spoke over the dry bones of Israel and brought new life and hope and possibilities to your people. We pray that you will breathe all over all of us today in the midst of our life, in the midst of our questions, in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of our defeats. Help us to come to life and to serve you boldly in the days to come. Oh God, we continue to pray for all of those who are sick and struggling due to the coronavirus. We ask that you would bring healing and peace to their life in the midst of all the unknowns and help all of those who are sick and hurting this day. God, we pray for those who are working in the medical field, for doctors, nurses, first responders, those who are risking so much to take care of people and to help bring healing to others' lives. Protect them, O God. Lord, we pray for our leaders, medical leaders, leaders in the government, leaders in our community, leaders in our church. Help us to all have the wisdom that we need to navigate these ever-changing times. God, we thank you for loving us and for using us in the world. Help us to boldly serve you and help us to speak words of life and hope to other people. We give you thanks for the beauty of this day. We give you thanks for the beauty of this week, for the opportunities that we have, and for the life and the hope that we have in Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Through the eyes of men, it seems there's so much we have lost. We look down the road where all the prodigals have walked. One by one, the enemy has whispered lies and led them off as slaves. But we know that you are God, yours is the victory. We know there is more to come that we may not yet see. With the faith you've given us, we step into the valley unfree. We call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. A power of the ashes, let us see. We call out to dead bones, come alive. God of endless mercy, God of unrelenting love, rescue every daughter, bring us back the wayward sons. By your spirit, breathe upon them, show the world that you alone can save.
dry bones come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. Up out of the ashes, let us see an army rise. We call out to dry bones, come alive. We call out to dry bones. Thank you for joining us for worship today. I hope that this has been an uplifting moment in your day and your week. I continue to be grateful for Travis Cottle and Barry Lancaster and all that they offer for us in worship. Friends, as you enter this new week, know that whatever you have been through, the worst thing is never the last thing. God has the final say, and there is great hope for all of us. So come alive. Be the church and make a difference in the world for Christ. Amen. We call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. Up out